الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله I wanted to address something that came was sent to me uh, and briefly talk about the importance of sticking to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and although I have not adequately prepared to speak about this topic and there's so much to be said but I want to address this call, this new call, and this is only in really contemporary times these movements of what are called liberal and reformist and modern Muslims and I just had a look at a clip that was sent to me and it was a woman <clears throat> no hijab all the women in the congregation were praying with no hijab there was a woman leading the salat with no hijab and pants not even a khimar nothing men and women were mixed together and they said gays and uh, everything is accepted and encouraged in their congregation and this is not taking from away from the fact that someone a Muslim can be gay but the fact that they are and still be Muslim but that this is a sinful practice and Islam does not condone that behavior however these groups they said they were taking charge and saying that it's time for we are liberal we are modern those others are the terrorists so basically they've declared that all the Muslims who don't accept their ideology and I don't say their version of Islam I say their ideology their false secular satanic ideology because they said Shia Sunni and every basically it was interfaith to the most extreme level that this was all acceptable and what's problematic about this indeed what's problematic about this is it goes against the Quran and it goes against the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it goes against the Sabil Mu'mineen and it goes against the path of the Salaf al -Saleh. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned us about innovative practices, things that have no resemblance to Islam, that they would come. He said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnat al rashidin al-mahdeen. Adu alayha bin nawajid with iyyakum muhtathir al-amur. Fa inna kullu bidatin dhalala. He said, that is upon you my sunnah. After he mentioned it, You'll see many differences. And now we see it to the most extreme ends. We have the people like ISIS, these extreme wicked devils that we don't condone. We fight against them with our tongues. And if need be, with our hands. And every which way we can. Because they don't represent Islam. They're extreme to Jawz al Had. They've gone beyond the bounds of Islam. They kill anything that and anyone who disagrees with them. And rape and pillage in the name of Islam, in the name of Allah, Allahu Akbar. Then we have the other wicked extreme. Yes, it's wicked. It's it's as wicked as these other people. Because these people claim Islam, defame and vilify real Islam which is anything else which doesn't accept their deviant beliefs and distort all and destroy all principles of Islam in the name of tolerance, in the name of not being considered terrorists, in the name of being considered being left alone to just worship any way they want and worship anyone they want because it's not Allah who they're worshiping. Absolutely not. Not when they try to belittle and destroy all the principles of the Qur'an. They take any shad opinion, any rare, strange opinion, and make that a part of their aqidah, their creed, 
and make that a part of their methodology of practice and their newly invented jurisprudence. So as I was on the hadith, the Prophet said, it's upon you to cling to my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khalifat. Cling to it with your molar teeth and beware of newly invented matters because matters because newly in all every newly invented matter leads to the hellfire. The Prophet وسلم, said also that we would break into sects. And these people, these so-called liberal Muslims, who really take bits and pieces of the Aqidah, the creed of the Mu'tazila and the Jahamiya because this is how they view the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the way they take a rationalist approach to interpretation and their rationale and their intellectual discourse and their explanation of the Quran comes from their rationale every human being's rationale is different every human being's every human being's intellectual capacity is different if I say something to you, you may interpret it one way, and a hundred other people who are listening will interpret it each in one hundred other fashions, because all of our intellect is different. This is the whole point of having what is known as tafsir. This is the whole point that the Prophet Sallallahu or he restricted the methodology for understanding the Qur'an and understanding his divine sunnah to the way of the Khulafa Rashidin al Mahdiin, to the Sabil of the Salaf al Saleh. Khair al Nasqarni, Thumma al Ladini Yalunuhum, Thumma al Ladini Yalunuhum. The best people is those of my generation, then those who follow them, then who follow them. It's not for us now to come after the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. To adhere to this straight path. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded, Hold on to the robe of the law altogether and do not divide. That doesn't mean that we take a new approach to this verse and say, well, in order to not ruffle the feathers of other people, I think we should allow the women to lead the salat. And I think the men and the women should be all mixed in together praying. And in order not to scare away new people to Islam, new reverts, I think we should just have no hijab so that they can feel comfortable however they want. If they want to come in and rip jeans, the women, if they want to come in a miniskirt, just come as you are. We want to accept everyone. We want liberalism. We want to liberalize the deen. You cannot change the deen of Allah Azza wa Jalla. The sunnah, the law, is the same. But in fact, it's upon you to conform to what your Lord wants. He created you. He created you. I did not create mankind and the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. You have to worship Allah, not your desires, not what feels good, not what's acceptable to the people. Not because you want to have interfaith discord, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares the Jews and the Christians as disbelievers. We can't change that fact. So that means we cannot have interfaith worship sessions. We cannot have Buddhist sittings. We can't. But we can invite them with kindness and gentleness. We can encourage them with that which is better and righteous, with hujj and barhan, with evidence. But not with deviance. You won't encourage them to change their behavior. In fact, just everyone does what they feel and what feels right. So self-help movement, self-help ideology is not going to improve your Islam and make you closer to Allah. Extreme Sufism and extreme destruction of the principle of Islam is not going to bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can you justify this kind of new ideology when Allah simply says, وَعَتِيُوا وَعَتِيُوا رَسُولُ and follow Allah and follow His Messenger. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If you love me, then follow the Messenger. A general paraphrase of the ayah. 
So, it's important. And I believe that regardless of these various movements, especially taking place in the West, but the, the influences are in Saudi Arabia, all around the world, the seculars onslaught against Islam. That although we have this kind of deviance and this kind of cancer, and yes, it spreads, it spreads to the very weak and the very ones who just love and almost worship their desires. The ones who legitimize a man marrying a man. No! If you are a Muslim homosexual, you should feel shame about that. You should not publicize that. You should strive to work on that. And you should make toba to Allah Azza wa Jal. But it's not for you to advertise. And then these so-called imams, imams of Dalal, imams of Ilhad, who justify and will marry a man and a man or a woman and a woman. It's not possible in Islam. So, I akhsha alayhim al-ilhad fi deen. I fear that these people are just, have left the religion of Islam. But I'll leave that to the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah to make takfir of them. But it shows you how dangerous these ideologies are. And that Islam in and of itself is balanced. The Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in and of itself is the straight path and is balanced. It doesn't teach you to be extremists, killing and slaughtering everything that moves like ISIS. ISIS have taken slaughter and destruction to a new level and confused people to... Some people think what they're doing is Islam. I mean, I'm talking about Muslims who join them. Because they spit some ayats. These people are the most wicked demons we can imagine. And likewise, they're friends, the secularists. They're friends who make any and every kind of deviant form of worship as lawful are also their brothers. Because they're all dogs of the hellfire. The Prophet said, Al Khwarij Kilab al Nar. So ISIS and Al-Qaeda, and Al-Qaeda is a Khafman ISIS. They are uh, not as extreme as ISIS. Even they say, you guys are a little bit too off. Do we have to cut those guys' head off with a butter knife? Do we have to cause a sectarian war in, in Iraq and in, 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 in Syria to incite the violence to try to make it Sunni Shia Abbas? Al-Qaeda says these kind of things. So my point is, Ahbatifillah, Ibta'id on the Shubahat. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ittaqo Shubahat. Beware of the Shubahat. Beware of the doubtful things. And encourage those people who claim to be Muslim. Or in fact, don't waste your time with them. Let them say that he's a Catholic Muslim. I, we, we have this. We People say this. I'm a Catholic Muslim. I'm a Buddhist Muslim. Because they are on such dalal and such disbelief. After disbelief, what is there? There's no belief after disbelief. It's only further disbelief. So, these people, I believe, will never really gain ground because the masses of the Muslims can't accept these things. They may be, to different levels, people are infected by some of these ideologies, but the masses will never pray behind a woman because it's just not Islamic according to the Islamic mores. It's not according to the Sunnah, the book, in the son of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's a very shad opinion and it takes a very twisted form of understanding in order to legitimize that practice as a mainstream practice. No one can bring up evidence from the history of Islam of that being a mainstream practice and bring evidence that that should be a mainstream practice. وَعِيَادٌ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ كُفْرٌ وَبِدْعَ وَالْدَلَالِ when we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, we'll sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyya